Hello, I'm Jay Hirsch, Director of Administration of the Columbia ERM Program. I'd like to welcome you to tonight's event, our featured alumni series panel. I'd like to tell you about some of our upcoming events that you may be interested in. On all Thursdays, we have our Exploring the Power of Mindfulness seminars. On Fridays, we have our Coding for ERM seminars. And on Saturdays, we have our IQRM seminars. On September 21st is our first CRO Spotlight series for the fall. This one featuring Philip Sherrill of Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield. On October 5th, we have our panel on the promise and perils of quantum computing. And on October 20th, we have another CRO Spotlight series, this one featuring Lakshmi Shyam Sunder of the World Bank Group. Our original moderator for tonight, Tony Dong, could not be here due to a scheduling conflict, but we're very lucky to have in his place Bob Kostakopoulos, Deputy Program Director and Lecturer in the ERM program. Bob. Thank you, Jay, very much. Uh, welcome, everyone. On behalf of uh, Program Director Sim Seagull and the ERM leadership uh, team, I welcome all of you. And I'm very happy to be uh, moderating this very important panel. It's one of, um, uh, it's one of our uh, first panels uh, of the semester, and, and uh, our panels are an important uh, co-curricular activity. And we, uh, we encourage our students to participate uh, in as many of those events as possible. Um, I uh, would like to uh, uh, begin the uh, introductions, begin the program actually, uh, 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 Jay, if you can stop sharing your screen. So we have a very distinguished uh, panel of, um, uh, of, of, pa uh, of uh, alums, the recent alums. We're very proud to have them here. And uh, I will have them introduce themselves in alphabetical order, starting with Moby. Moby, please go ahead. Hi. Um, hi. First of all, I'd like to say that it's a big honor to be here. Uh, and I'd like to say welcome to everyone. Uh, a few months ago, I was sitting in Bob's hot seat, and today I'm on the other side of uh, the panel. So uh, it's uh, quite a change for me. Uh, by way of background, I started out my career as an investment banker at Goldman Sachs uh, many moons ago. I worked within the investment banking space for several years and uh, happened to live through the carnage of the credit crisis in 2008. Uh, which some of you might remember and others will learn about once you apply to this program. Um, as you may recall, many firms such as Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns went under. And actually, I was uh, very amazed to see that there was a paucity of good risk managers that existed in this that didn't exist in the space. I also saw that there were a slew of regulations that were coming down the line, and I felt that there would be a lot of demand in this particular sector and industry uh, for good risk managers. And so uh, when the stars aligned and I got the opportunity to find out about the Enterprise Risk Management Program at Columbia University, I was very, very excited about it and I to it. And much to my uh, joy, I was accepted into the program. Um, and, uh, you know, also uh, very honored to say that in the spring of this year, I graduated top five of my program and accepted a position with Morgan Stanley doing enterprise risk reporting and governance for the CRO's office. Um, so thanks to this program, I ended up exactly where I wanted to be. Um, and, uh, you know, very excited to be a part of this panel. Thank you for having me. And I, I'd like to turn it over to my other panelists now. Hi everyone and thanks Moby. Uh, thanks everyone for having me here in this uh, great opportunity, you know, to talk about my experiences and, uh, you know, different things that I can share with everyone around uh, here. Um, so I graduated from this program in 2020. Uh, I'm a computer science graduate, so, you know, not uh, 
very common, you know, among the, you know, that you hear that people get into risk or have that kind of a background. But surprisingly enough, I got early in my career, a great opportunity to work in the risk management field when I joined a, a global petrochemical and oil and gas firm and uh, started my career uh, working on different commodities as well as uh, developing the risk appetite framework. Um, then I moved to a consulting role where I was working with different banks, uh, mostly in the South Asian market and was working uh, for their operation risk management uh, uh, framework as well. Uh, however, look, looking into the you know the limited scope that I had uh, based on the uh, you know semi mature programs that uh, were uh, available there, I found out ERM program as a great opportunity for me to upskill uh, with uh, respect to the risk management uh, trends that were coming up, and that's when you know uh, I took the leap forward and joined the program. Uh, you know as uh, Moby as well man mentioned. Uh, I also graduated with a top five ERM student distinction and was fortunate enough to uh, get a position with Morgan Stanley in the fraud risk space, which is a, a very recent uh, field uh, that have been growing. And uh, I have been using a lot of things that I learned over the course of period uh, during my ERM program as well. So happy to share anything you know uh, with all the folks around here. Uh, and thanks, uh, moving over to Fabio. Thanks, Ankit, and good seeing everybody. Good seeing my former ERM program colleagues and professors. Uh, fun fact, my first lecture at the ERM program was with Professor Bob Costacopoulos. So very good seeing everybody here. Uh, I'm glad, I'm very happy to join this, this program. Uh, I started my career in audit and gradually moved to the risk management uh, path in the, even in the early years of my career. So I have had the opportunity to, of working in a number of financial institutions and other industries, uh, but primarily in credit risk management. Uh, HSBC Bank was the bank I built uh, most part of my career. I've been with the bank for over 10 years and had the opportunity to work in uh, you know, many geographies across Latin America, in, uh, primarily in Sao Paulo, Brazil, where I come from, and almost a decade in New York City. So it's been a, a great opportunity uh, to develop my career within, within HSBC Bank. I earned my master's degree in enterprise risk management at Columbia University in the summer of 2020. It's a flagship program. Uh, I guess we can discuss a little bit more later, but uh, it's been really a game changer for me and for my career. Even being uh, an experienced uh, risk management professional, the Columbia degree made all the difference uh, for me even to achieve uh, the chief risk officer level where I am at the moment. So since April, I moved back home uh, to Brazil. Uh, and I've been, like I said, I've been the chief risk officer of our bank down here, the Brazilian operations of, of HSBC, which is pretty much focused on investment banking services, as well as some uh, uh, trade finance services. So with that, I'll turn it, turn it over to you, Bob. Thank you, uh, uh, panelists, for your great uh, introductions. Uh, thank you, Fabio. Thank you, Moby. Thank you, Ankit. Um, it's, it's, as you can see, uh, dear audience, uh, uh, you have uh, excellent panelists, but I do want you to, um, uh, to, to know that it, it, uh, this year, this uh, fall, the uh, alumni uh, panel includes uh, uh, people who uh, have had experience, uh, be, uh, business experience and risk experience before they came to the program and of course continue to be in that same field. Last year's, uh, it was mostly uh, alums who had uh, uh, did not have the privilege of having had experience uh, before landing their uh, their jobs. So uh, you are uh, you have the privilege of listening to people who have had uh, experience uh, prior to um, 
uh, coming to the program and, and, uh, and, and continuing with their careers at uh, uh, higher levels. So Fabio is uh, uh, at the executive level and Moby and, and Ankit at the um, uh, level of aspiring to become the CROs or uh, part of the executive uh, suite. So what I would like to um, uh, have uh, our panelists address and discuss is um, uh, give us some sort of idea how the domain knowledge and skills that you acquired uh, during your ERM program, uh, masters, uh, how did that help you in your current executive management level for Fabio and uh, on, on your plan to uh, move up the uh, corporate ladder for Moby and Ankit? How do you plan to, uh, to, to use the domain knowledge and the tools that, that you learned to uh, uh, advance further your careers? I'll start with, uh, with Fabio and then I'll go to uh, Moby and then to Ankit. Fabio. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Bob. Uh, well, what I what I can say is, you know, it's been a long journey of planning until I became the chief risk officer of, of HSBC in Brazil. You know, it's not something that happened by coincidence, but what I can say is undoubtedly the Master of Science in, in Enterprise Risk Management at Columbia University was a great part of it. Uh, until, until I began the master's program, my experience was more related to wholesale credit risk, which is a very specific and focused discipline within risk management. So if you're specialized in credit risk, that's it. You pretty much you know, stay in that path over the course of your career. Uh, so as, as part of my planning, and I, I really did a... a uh, a detailed plan of, you know, how to become a CRO, uh, I quickly realized that I should be exposed to other risk disciplines, such as other financial uh, risk management uh, disciplines like market risk, liquidity risk, and uh, non-financial risk disciplines. And here's where the Columbia program enters as it shapes the risk management of the present and the future, uh, supported not by only hard skills, uh, but also soft skills, uh, as well as top-notch risk management techniques. Uh, all that said, I think the, the ERM program helped me to, to get exposed to risk management, not only in banking, but also in uh, several spheres of the economy. If you think about uh, that, the lectures were always... Um, given with real life examples uh, from, from companies and, uh, and situations across many sectors in the economy. Uh, the, the program also gave me a great toolbox and resources uh, and a great networks of risk practitioners and faculty. Uh, those are you know, always uh, people you can reach out to. Uh, I think, you know, as a last word on this topic, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to my, my fellow panelists, uh, the, the curriculum uh, has also a great selection of soft skills subjects, such as communication and managing human behavior, just to, to mention two of them, uh, which are paramount uh, to raise up to the leadership, le leadership level in, in organizations. I think, you know, I, I was always thrilled to uh, to dig on you know in uh, all the financial risk management uh, disciplines and learn more about quantitative risk management, etc. But uh, learning how to communicate, for example, how to uh, manage people, how to have empathy, you know, are great skills. You you have a hint while you are in class, but only when you are at that level, you can really feel that what you learned in class made real sense and made, made, made difference. Okay, um, I think Moby is next. Yeah, thank you, Fabio. That was, uh, I don't think I can add a lot to that, uh, considering uh, just 
the fact that you covered everything and you're at the chief risk officer level, so it made so much sense. But I think just for me personally, I think what this program has done is, you know, really um, equipped me on two very important levels. Uh, one is uh, communication and the other is creating stakeholder buy-in. And I think this program at Columbia University keeps reiterating just how important those two things are. And as someone who's working in risk on the second line of defense, I think so much of what we do is review and challenge. Uh, just being able to communicate your message effectively and be able to create the kind of buy-in that you need from a disparate uh, number of stakeholders just makes a world of difference. And I think so many times, uh, if you can't really get your message across, you're not effective. And it's hard to become um, you know, an executive level C-suite person if you're not an effective communicator. And I 100% credit this program for equipping me with all the skills I needed to really be able to find my voice uh, in a way that made me feel I was being much more effective in my role. Um, and so um, I think that's what I'd like to add. And, I, and, and really, I have uh, this program to thank for that. Thank you, Moby. Ankit? Well, uh, yeah, I think after listening to uh, Fabio and Moby, I don't have a lot to add. Uh, however, I would still you know, try to give my two cents around this. Uh, I think this program definitely has equipped me uh, with a lot of skills. Uh, you know, both Fabio and Moby have already talked about and emphasized on uh, the strategic communication uh, skills that we have learned throughout the program. And uh, talking about you know stakeholder buy-in, uh, I work with operations team who are on the front line as well as you know first line risk teams on a daily basis, and you know getting the approvals and agreement. It does come with its own challenges, and I think um, having a proper communication definitely helps. Um, I I specifically work for the U.S. banks entity of my bank, and uh, one of the major part is related to the OCC exams that keep on happening all the time. And I think you know the skills that I acquired uh, through the external stakeholders course really equipped me well enough, you know, to understand and uh, you know cater to the needs of uh, you know the periodic exams that happen uh, by the regulator. And uh, I can definitely pitch in uh, more towards uh, if we are doing our job correctly. Uh, also, you know, uh, I would also like to state that a uh, couple of other you know courses that I took, uh, for example, company failures uh, has definitely equipped me to understand and assess the risk of, you know, for any kind of business plan that the company has. Our company is currently, you know, going through a huge uh, uh, process of integration by acquiring one of the largest uh, brokerage firms. And uh, it's a great learning opportunity for me to, you know, utilize those skills uh, and, and ensure that all the controls do not fail. And we keep on testing uh, the processes and controls at the same time. So it, it, it has definitely, you know, equipped me, you know, to take up more responsible positions and climb up the vertical ladder uh, much faster that I would have not been able to uh, if, uh, you know, I would have not acquired the skills uh, during the program. Thank you, Ankit. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you, uh, Moby. Uh, you gave us a lot of good information. Um, uh, you told us that there's planning in someone's career, so you have to be... Um, able to uh, be, uh, see yourself, uh, posit yourself in, uh, in, your, in the future and in what position you want to be in, what industry and so forth. Uh, you mentioned about the uh, practicum courses that you took that, that made an impression on you and helped you um, polish uh, and learn new skills. You talked about uh, stakeholder buy-in, uh, that, that was Moby, uh, that um, it's not enough to, to have good ideas, uh, uh, you must be able to convince other people, people about your ideas and, 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 and take appropriate action. So let's uh, uh, thank you for that. Let's, let's move to the next question. And uh, many of uh, students uh, in our audience here uh, recall the, uh, the orientation day where they were introduced to any number of resources um, and, uh, and uh, various uh, co-curricular activities, uh, 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 all of those things that are available to them uh, at uh, Columbia during the time they uh, are in the program, uh, including um, you know, easy access to the faculty for advice, uh, easy access to academic advisors, uh, uh, career design lab, uh, uh, 
library services, uh, writing center, uh, uh, the networking events with fellow students, as, as well as uh, alums and the various webinars and panels that, um, that Jay mentioned uh, at the beginning. So my question to you is, uh, is you know, what sort of um, uh, use did you make of the uh, resources that, that were available to you at Columbia? What kind of uh, a combination of these resources and activities did you supported you in landing your current roles? Uh, and we can start with, um, uh, let's see, we can start with Moby and then move to Ankit and then uh, Fabio. Uh, Moby, please. Um, so I, I would say that I think for me, at least, I felt that the network that Columbia offered was bar none. Um, and the reason that I say that, and, and by way of anecdotal evidence, uh, when I was ready to uh, apply to you know, this, this uh, job at Morgan Stanley, which I was very excited about, uh, the first thing that I did was um, I called up one of my fellow alums who I'd taken some courses with, and I said, this is what I'm doing. Can you give me your advice? You're working at Morgan Stanley. And we had an hour long conversation where she talked to me about the job, about, you know, Morgan Stanley culture. Um, and then she was able to put in an internal referral for me. So that would not have happened unless I was at Columbia University, you know, studying with my fellow alums who I got to know really well, became really good friends with. Um, having said that, one of my very dear friends right now is director of operations at an endowment fund. Another great friend is the head of audit at you know, a large bank. Fabio, uh, I can't tell you the number of times I called up Fabio and asked him for his advice when I was exploring various roles. Um, you know, it's not just that. These were some of my favorite drinking buddies. We used to go to the local watering hole. The network just is an unbelievable resource. The, the more you show up, the more you talk to people, the more you realize what an incredible network Columbia offers you. And then I think the second aspect of it is just the professors. It's incredible to me that all of the professors are industry practitioners. Uh, my credit risk uh, professor was the head of DTCC, for example, and I was able to get information from him that was not just relevant in an academic setting, but was very much relevant to a professional career as well. Um, and I think just the plethora of industry practitioners that we have, plus this incredible alumni network, for me, that was, uh, that was uh, you know, it was a deal center for me. Just thank you, uh, Moby. That was very, very useful and, and, and helpful. Uh, so we move on to Ankit for his uh, views. Ankit, please. Sure. Uh, thank you, Bob. And thanks, Moby. I think uh, Moby has talked uh, quite in detail about the uh, networking uh, benefits that she has, you know, used uh, as well as you know, while landing her job at Morgan Stanley. But I would also want to emphasize uh, about so many other factors that have played a role, uh, you know, in uh, me utilizing so many things. So, for example, uh, Career Design Lab. I have always been connected with Career Design Lab with respect to my resume building, uh, getting career advice over, you know, the kind of roles that I should look uh, look at, or getting connected with uh, different hiring managers as well. Um, the library, uh, there, there is no library at Columbia University that I have not visited. It's only because there is immense amount of resources that is available at those libraries. Uh, you know, you can reference different books, uh, go into their digital journals, uh, uh, take advice from the librarian as well. And, you know, the learning, the study rooms are so good that you can, you know, come work on your assignments uh, and you know, use all the library resources as well. Um, I would also like to add a point related to uh, the professors, you know, that I have connected to uh, over the course of my time, uh, I've, you know, during my, uh, uh, during when I was trying to, you know, look out for roles in the industry, uh, I leveraged all the resources that I could, uh, you know, get from, and advice that I could get from professors. Uh, for example, you know, I was uh, interviewing for a community bank uh, back in Texas, and the first person I reached out to was Professor ba uh, Bob, because he used to run two community banks, and, you know, his advice was uh, really, really helpful. Uh, same goes with, you know, other cases where I was uh, applying for a trade surveillance role and, you know, I could reach out to one of the professors who was a uh, head of trade surveillance at uh, that time at Barclays. So I think uh, really using uh, an, uh, the advice uh, that you can get from different professors helps a lot. 
and uh, it's great to see that we have a growing uh, uh, you know alumni base uh, across the world that we can always leverage in terms of you know uh, getting referrals or getting career advice the kind of roles that you will look after uh, i think that really helps a lot and lastly uh, the academic advisors any questions that you have i think i have taken enough uh, opportunity to take uh, advice from them if i'm stuck for anything uh, any operational issues or any anything that you know uh, that i would require uh, an assistance with so yeah uh, that's that's from me thank you ankit that's really very helpful and uh, we are happy that uh, that you appreciate the uh, uh, yeah, the, the benefit that you got from those resources. Uh, and they are open to our students, as you know, uh, with quite uh, easy access. Uh, Fabio, please. Yeah, I think my, my colleagues covered uh, most of the, of the topics. I, I would just like to highlight one topic that, that Moby said. It's about the network, not only among the students, but also with the professors. I think uh, I, I recall one of the situations where I was going, uh, you know, uh, our bank was, was having a, a, a regulatory exam. And uh, I, I remember one of my uh, professors was, uh, he was the head of uh, all the regulatory department within Standard & Poor's. So I reached out to him and he gave me a lot of information and advices and do's and don'ts. So uh, that was really, really helpful. I guess the other thing is about the Career Design Lab. Uh, I, I, I used the Career Design Lab, I think, two times over the, the two years I spent in the, in the program at Columbia. Uh, I, even being a, a little more experienced than, than, than most of my colleagues, I think was very helpful to you know, to get some advices on my resume and, you know, talk to people and perhaps uh, get some, uh, some insight, uh, insights and uh, information of th this people at the career, career design lab, they are extremely well connected. So uh, I, I recall one of the advisors there uh, told me, hey, you should reach out to this person because uh, he will be, a, you know, a good point of contact for you. So he facilitated that the, the contact. And, you know, other than that, the uh, Career Design Lab has a beautiful building at Times Square, I think. And the coffee is great. Thank you. Thank you, Fabio. Uh, so um, as you see, um, the, um, uh, the resources available to you can really help you um, uh, in, in the process of uh, managing your career, getting the first job, uh, or getting a better job, uh, or whatever your objective is. And I hope uh, out of the advice that you heard, you realize that you uh, really need to get be engaged, you need to take agency of your uh, career goals, that you need to be active, you need to connect. Uh, Columbia gives you the platform without a question. Uh, it's you that uh, you need to go out and connect with people. And um, uh, as we said, uh, as uh, Sim uh, Siegel said in the orientation, uh, you, your, your classmates are people who are going places. So uh, join, uh, join them and join the alum uh, uh, association uh, and, and connect with people, the, your professors, and, and uh, academic advisors, the Career Design Lab, and all the resources. All right, thank you. Um, now we are moving to um, uh, some uh, nitty gritty question because Fabio, when he was in the program, he also had a job, a full-time job. That's why his program uh, took two years to finish. Uh, Moby had a uh, uh, you know, family to run kids uh, while she was doing the program as well. So the question is, uh, you're well uh, uh, informed in uh, the matter of how do you balance work, academics, home life, and, and what sort of advice uh, you can give to our current students uh, facing similar challenges. I'd like to start with uh, Fabio and then go to, uh, uh, to Moby and then Ankit, uh, Fabio. 
score, Bob. Thank you. Uh, I I want an eye. Uh, it was a was a challenging period for me. Uh, I I recall staying late uh, on Fridays in the office, you know, after work, just to kind of do my assignments and all the readings, etc. So. And, and at the moment that I started the program, it's like the, the perfect storm, right? Everything happened at the same time. I got promoted in my, at my job at the time. And uh, I, I got the opportunity to head up the, what we call the sector coverage within credit risk management. So I was responsible for covering from a, from a credit risk perspective, uh, all healthcare companies and, and basically services companies, which was a, a pretty uh, big portfolio of, of companies within, within, within the bank. So uh, having to deal with the increased pressure at work and the rigorous academic demand from the program, I, I mean, it, it, it took a lot of dedication and many hours of study. I guess uh, one, maybe one piece of advice here I can give is to make sure, and, and Moby maybe can explore this a little more, but just make sure that your partner is with you uh, on that journey, because, you know, you, you have, you have to basically split, you know, your time that is, you don't, you don't have a lot of free time, I, I would suppose, but you have to split it with uh, family, with your job, and, uh, and also with the, the, the academic tasks and friends and, and daily life, right? You have uh, to, sometimes you have to prioritize uh, and take on some, some activities and you know, forget about the others. Uh, in my case, I remember one of the strategies I used was to arrive earlier uh, to the classes. So uh, normally, I, li like Bob said, I, I, I did the, the part-time program. So normally I used to, to take, you know, the eight, I think was uh, the classes started like 810 or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember arriving earlier uh, to the classes and enjoying the facilities of a, of a library and, you know, try to read everything. Uh, the, the material is very extensive, but, you know, it's, it's comprehensive. And at the same time, you, you, you got to come prepared to the classes, you know, classes are pretty much an, an interaction with the professor where you, you raise your hand and, and ask your questions. Um, so the, the other strategy I, I used was to also use the facilities of my neighborhood public library during the weekends. So uh, at the time my kids were uh, five and, and two years old. So as you can imagine, uh, there was uh, quite a lot of activity in my household during the weekends. So uh, I, I, that was one of the strategy I used. And also I had, a, uh, at that time, I had a one hour plus uh, commuting time. So I also used that to complete readings and, and assignments. But listen, uh, all in all, uh, it's, uh, very demanding program. I won't uh, lie, uh, but you know what? This is Colombia. This is Ivy League, and you know, uh, if you plan it, if you have a lot of dedication, hard work, and I would say positive mindset as well, you can do it. I think it's uh, it's very possible, and here you, we are, uh, you know, harvesting all this all these fruits. Thank you, Fabio. That's very informative. Uh, Moby. Yeah, wow, Fabio, what do I add to that? Okay, so um, it's interesting because when I started the program, I was the mother of a toddler. And when I ended the program, I was the mother of a toddler and an infant. And many of my classmates saw me in class pregnant. Um, so she was my younger one is my Columbia cub, and I'm really hoping that she ends up at Columbia someday as well. Um, in any case, uh, so my advice is, yes, it's an incredibly challenging time. But look, take the positive out of it. The silver lining out of this is that if you can get through a program like Columbia, 
with or without kids, if you can do it with or without a job, it's preparing you for the real world. And that's what the program did for me, right? Because when I was at Columbia, I learned how to manage two kids, this very intense program, as Fabio said, it's a Ivy League program, it's not a joke, um, and all of my other commitments. And so when I started work, literally five days after I graduated, I hit the ground running. And it was a seamless transition because Columbia had prepared me for that. Now, if I was to give you a piece of advice, my advice would be pick your teams wisely. I was very fortunate in that I was able to find other people in the program who were similar to me, like my very good friends who were working, had families, and had very limited amount of time within which they had to achieve a lot. And so we were all incredibly focused on what we needed to get done. We were very organized and we were very respectful of each other's times. So if you pick a good team, and you know that your team's priorities align with yours, then you know you're gonna have a much easier time getting through the program. And I think Fabio, you were on some of my teams. Ankit, I did not have the honor of having you on my teams, but I wish I did, but we're at the same firm. But that's my advice. Pick your teams well, throw yourself into the deep end, immerse yourself into the program. It's the silver lining is you come out much stronger on the other side. And we had a lot of fun too. We had so much fun. <laughs> that's, uh, that's great. Uh, thank you, uh, Moby. Uh, Ankit. Sure. Uh, so, well, I'll be honest. I, I did not have that much challenges uh, like Fabio and Moby here, but I, I still feel that, you know, uh, the program was pretty intense uh, and also depends how much, you know, you want to give in to make uh, your journey, journey you know, worth, worth it. Uh, but however, you know, I would like to say that, you know, Throughout my journey with Columbia, I was associated uh, uh, into some or the other part-time position, you know, just to uh, stay more connected with the university and the program. And uh, managing time was a great learning experience from that, you know, uh, finishing up the course requirements, uh, as well as, you know, completing the deliverables for your, uh, from your positions that you have been taking up. It definitely teaches you a lot of things that you can, you know, inculcate and uh, use uh, in your future positions as well. So. Yeah, it has it has definitely been a challenging position, but a great learning experience. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Ankit. Uh, uh, thank you all very much. Uh, as you see, uh, it pays for uh, you to connect with your fellow students. You make friendships, and you help each other uh, through uh, this uh, program. Uh, in, in all of your courses, you are going to be uh, uh, working with. Uh, your fellow students uh, in groups, uh, you learn how to uh, manage, um, uh, to do work, the best work within a group. And, uh, and there you make really uh, great, great friends, uh, as you heard from our panelists uh, just now. All right, so um, I'd like to move on to um, uh, the next uh, question that has to do with um, with uh, you sharing uh, with us um, some of the uh, most significant challenges and obstacles that you faced uh, trying to get a job in your last semester at the, in the program. Um, and, and you all ended up uh, in, in the financial in industry. Um, and, you know, many of our students, many of our graduates, maybe as, as, as many as much as 70% of them end up in the, in, in the, in the financial industry. Um, but the program is diverse and, uh, and includes uh, uh, non-financial uh, industry as well, roles as well. Uh, so what were some of the significant, uh, significant challenges uh, that, you, uh, that you faced while trying to wrap up uh, the, pro uh, the program uh, and at the same time uh, uh, arrange for interviews, arrange for training with the uh, CDL uh, and, and, doing, uh, and, and doing those activities. What were the challenges? Uh, shall we start with, um, uh, let's start with Ankit and then we go to Moby and then to Fabio. Ankit. Thanks, Bob. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's a great question. Uh, so where do I start? Actually, you know, it, it has been a very uh, challenging journey, but a very rewarding journey at the same time. 
Uh, so I started my journey uh, in fall 2019, where you know it was a normal word, and you know people could meet each other in person, shake hands, and whatnot. <laughs> And you know, uh, I I try to make the best out of it by attending a lot of seminars, so you know, panelist events that were happening in person, go outside in the industry in the financial district, and you know, attend so many you know different events just to uh, you know stay connected with the industry people. Um, just you know, this really helps because you know, uh, so that you can build connections, and you know, if there are some opportunities in different industries, you can always reach out to those people for some help. However, you know. At the you know at the start of spring 2020, we all know the pandemic hit and things went completely virtually, which kind of restricted uh, me to you know stay connected the way things were before in fall. And that's when you know I kind of stepped up my game with respect to connecting virtually uh, with you know whomsoever I feel like maybe you know able to guide me and advise me over the kind of career choices I should make uh, after graduating from the program. Uh, so that's what happened and uh, Career Design Lab helped me a lot with respect to getting me connected to certain right folks around uh, who can, you know, uh, put me up in the right spot and, you know, help me connect with the right hiring managers. I, I could not, you know, uh, emphasize it enough as well. And uh, the biggest, uh, I think, uh, hurdle was, uh, you know, as an international student, sometimes, you know, uh, uh, because of the pandemic as well, there was a lot of hiring freeze and, so I have I have gone through all of those things, but at the end of the day, the support, the immense support that I've got from uh, the professors, um, the advisors uh, at CDL, as well as my peers from the program, uh, I could not uh, emphasize it enough because uh, a lot of my uh, a lot of my peers from the program or people who graduated before me helped me with a lot of things. Uh, you know uh, how uh, share their experience, uh, how how they landed up jobs. And uh, a lot of people that are uh, currently in the industry, you know, are they are having multiple roles. So, you know, it gave me a better perspective of what uh, kind of roles that I should be looking out for, as well as take their advice uh, about, you know, a lot of things. So I feel that, uh, you know, the journey was long. However, uh, the, the sheer use of resources around me uh, really helped me to, you know, uh, kind of land where I really wanted to be. Thank you, uh, Ankit. Um, okay, so uh, Moby, uh, would you like to step in? Yeah, absolutely. I, so I think for me, um, and building on some of what Ankit said, I think the challenge was definitely twofold. Uh, one was that we were in the midst of, you know, the largest pandemic we've seen in like, I want to say 100 years. So obviously trying to really connect with people, interview and land a role during a pandemic comes with its own set of challenges. Thankfully, uh, because we'd already gone online and Colombia had prepared us so well how to interact with people in an online world, it was much easier for me to present myself in a flattering light and connect with people. And then I think secondly, for me, the big challenge was that I came from a non-risk background and I was making a career switch. Um, you know, as a prior investment banking professional, I didn't really speak the language of risk management. And I felt that the Columbia program itself gave me a lot of credibility on that front. I was serious about pursuing a career in risk management because I pursued a very um, strong degree at a university like Columbia in risk management. And then not only that, Columbia was able to give me the language that I needed to speak in order to come across as a credible person in the risk management space. I was able to understand how all the various risk stripes worked I didn't have a siloed approach. I was able to have a very holistic, you know, uh, I, I want to say a fully baked view of what it takes to be a risk manager. And then thanks to all the classes I took, um, you know, I was able to really be more effective in communicating how uh, serious I was about pursuing a role. So I think those were the two challenges I faced. And thankfully, thanks to the resources, the program itself, I was really able to get past those challenges in a successful way and end up with a position. And I'm happy to say that I think many of my fellow alumni who I was very close to, despite facing many of these numerous challenges, have ended up with great jobs, you know, primarily, as you said, working on Wall Street. Thank you, Moby. Uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a great, uh, great input there. And um, uh, Fabio, um, what are your thoughts on this? Well, about, about the challenges, besides taking the New York subway 
uh, to go up to Colombia, I guess one of the one of the challenges is you know that that I really observed in uh, many students was to establish uh, a network. Uh, so sometimes when people uh, start the program, uh, I, I had the feeling that they tend to to uh, put themselves into small groups that you know have the same interests, which is a natural thing. But I guess uh, to to challenge yourself is to go beyond these groups and perhaps network with with everybody. Uh, you know, like Moby said, sometimes you, you know, you, you talk to someone and that person can give you a different perspective. Uh, you talk to the professors and honestly, I felt like the, all the professors, 100%, they were like one of us, you know, they were, they were talking to you, not at the professor level, but at the same level. Uh, and that was uh, even applicable to, to the director of the program, Professor Sim. Uh, I remember having, having very fun conversations uh, with him about, you know, about risk management, about uh, the methodology he, he developed and about his trips and, and everything else. So I think, I think that's, a, that's a real challenge uh, to go beyond your circle, uh, the circle you feel comfortable and network with the others. I mean, you know, you're investing a lot of time, you're investing a lot of effort uh, and network is a big part of it. Uh, I mean, it's not, it's not something that, that, you know, we, we should take it for, for granted. You know, you should, you should go after and, and try to build that, that powerful, powerful network. That's, uh, that's great, Fabio. Thank you so much. Uh, as you see, um, uh, Moby came from an investment banking uh, background and then pivoted to, uh, into risk. Um, she kept in touch with um, you know, uh, old friends. She made new ones uh, at Columbia. And, uh, and so did Ankit. I remember Ankit when he first came to, uh, uh, to the program. Uh, he was very, very active. Uh, he wanted to take in as much as he could. Uh, he would come to the office. Uh, he would talk to uh, administrators, academic advisors, uh, professors, uh, come into uh, webinars, uh, panels. Uh, he was everywhere. Uh, he initiated contact on his own uh, with, uh, uh, with companies. And uh, I remember many times uh, he would come to me and say, uh, I made contact with so-and-so uh, and, -so, and uh, well, uh, how, how can we uh, connect uh, and, and, and make that relationship more institutional? And, um, and, and we would go out and, and, and uh, make that connection. So uh, uh, this is what I mean by saying uh, you have to be willing to take agency of your career, be in charge uh, and, uh, and uh, seek out advice seek out connections. Um, the faculty is too easy, uh, offers too easy access to all of that. So, all right. Um, uh, Fabio, of course, uh, you know, I remember him. Uh, he was a professional because uh, that's how he came into the program. And I enjoyed having him in, in, uh, in my class. He had great input and, and um, uh, he was a role model for the rest of the students as well. Uh, so, um, uh, Moby, uh, you know, she, uh, she participated in so many events of the program uh, that uh, she made a very strong impression on, anyone, uh, on everyone. Uh, so, having said all that, thank you for the answers that you gave. I'd like to move on to um, a question that uh, may be on the minds of many of our uh, students, incoming students. And the question has to do with um, uh, you um, sharing with us and our students uh, your impressions of how uh, hiring managers, employers, or colleagues that you interacted with in the process of landing a job, how do, do they, did they perceive in terms of esteem uh, your education 
and your Columbia Master of Science in NRM degree. What was their reaction when you say, I am a candidate for the Master of Science uh, degree in uh, Enterprise Risk Management at Columbia? And let's start with, uh, with Ankit, and then we'll go to Fabio, and then to Moby. Ankit. Thanks, Bob, for the question. So uh, in simple one sentence, I can put it, it puts you ahead of everyone else, uh, for sure. It does come up come up with its Columbia branding and, you know, the reputation associated with it. Uh, also, you know, understanding that the program is fairly new uh, and, you know, still uh, growing very rapidly. I have two interesting stories to share. So uh, last year when I was uh, completing my summer internship at a firm called Genworth Financial, which was a part of GE Capital, and I was working as an ERM intern there. Uh, I was being mentored by uh, the global head of uh, business expansion and strategy for the firm. And, you know, I was always talking about uh, taking his career advice and, you know, what kind of choices I should make, how to connect with people, uh, if there are any opportunities. Uh, and he always used to tell me that you don't even have to worry at all, uh, looking into the fact that you are already being mentored by so many distinct professors uh, who are industry leaders in the same industry as well as you have so many you know, colleagues that you always talk about that are either taking up great jobs in the industry or have already secured uh, decent offers. So definitely there is, a, there is an immense uh, perception about this program being at top of its game and uh, producing really uh, you know, great experts in the field having a very you know, strong knowledge. The other recent story that I would want to share, it's very recent, it's just two weeks old. So uh, a global chief risk officer at Morgan Stanley, uh, we had a more, I would say, intimate uh, meeting with him uh, in our office within you know, a group of 10 to 15, which is a privilege looking at the size of the firm. And uh, he, it caught his eye that uh, there were three uh, uh, colleagues of his who are from Colombia and have recently graduated and are working in the, you know, the firm risk management of the firm. And uh, he was so curious to know more about the program. And, you know, when we discuss about the kind of skills we get to learn with respect to, uh, you know, credit risk, market risk, operational risk, uh, talking, you know, things about regulators, communication, et cetera. Uh, he just uh, was so appreciative about the program and he just wished that he could have the, he could have the opportunity to, you know, uh, attend such a program when he was studying. So it only talks about the kind of, uh, you know, the perception is there in the market about the program and it, it's just getting better. Thank you. Thank you, Ankit. Um, uh, Fabio? Yeah, sure. No, uh, yes, go ahead, Fabio. All right, thank you. Uh, I think that uh, the perception is is the best possible. Uh, let, let's be honest here. When you put, when you put a, a Columbia degree in your resume, it 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 speaks for itself uh so you don't really need to to say a lot of things in addition to that but uh what was a surprise to me is that most of the people didn't really uh realize that columbia has a risk management program uh and when i started i think the program was around four or five years old or something like that uh pretty pretty new still uh, but uh, when I ended the program back in the summer 2020 uh, I was surprised that the program was was well known uh, I think you know Columbia did a great job in terms of, uh, of marketing the program in the right way doing uh, doing pretty good uh, events now we see the CRO spotlight series it's a, it's a flagship event um, so I think people normally, they know Columbia Business School, they know SIPA, they know all the, the, the very uh, uh, well-known schools in the university. But I, I think this program, and, and I remember just something similar uh, to what happened to Ankit, I was being mentored by the, by the CRO uh, of, of HSBC in the US. And he was like, oh, what's this program about? 
And I explained to him, we, we discussed a little bit about uh, risk appetite and, uh, and financial risks, non-financial risks, and then the soft skills part. Uh, and he said, well, I, I wish I could be, be part of it. Uh, so I was like, well, you, you can uh, just, just go and, and enroll, you know, do, do the admissions program and then, then maybe, maybe you can, you can, you can give it a shot. Uh, so, you know, all joking aside, I think, I think it was, it was great. Uh, the program has gained a lot of uh, relevance, uh, especially within the, the risk management practitioners. And, you know, I couldn't, honestly, I couldn't be, be happier to be, to be part of it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Fabio. Um, Moby? Yeah, well, um, thanks, Fabio and Ankit. That was great. Let me see if I can add something. Um, but first of all, in agreement with my colleagues, I would say that as long as, as soon as, they, as, your, as Columbia's name is on your resume, you're going to get your foot in through the door. At least you're going to get a call back as far as your interview is concerned. And there's no question about that. And then secondly, I think I have two fun, interesting anecdotes to share. One is that um, the other day I was um, at work at, at Morgan and I was uh, meeting this lady that I met for the first time. She's a senior executive director. And I was talking to her and I said, you know, I just did my master's from Columbia University in enterprise risk management. And she said, that's interesting. And I said, uh, why? She said, because I can vouch for that program. And I said, oh, really, how is that? And she said, I'm a professor in the program. And so, you know, there's, there's real life um, examples of when you would find out that industry practitioners and risk managers are affiliated with the program that you are graduating from. What can be better than that in terms of perception, right? And then the second thing I'll say is that in a lot of the interviews that I went through, um, as you as you interview, you go through various rounds and you meet you know people who are junior, and then you go up the rounds and you meet senior people. Particularly as far as the senior people who were concerned, who were heads of enterprise risk management. They would look at this degree and they would be very interested in having an academic conversation with you about what it meant to have an enterprise risk framework and what made an enterprise risk framework successful. Um, and I think, you know, from that perspective, just the fact that we had access to Sim's book and everything that he talks about in that particular book, it makes for such an incredible conversation. I specifically remember one person asking me in the course of an interview saying, well, look, if you're trying to achieve your business plan and you don't hit strategy on the mark, who takes ownership of that particular risk? And really that comes down to understanding how to categorize risk, right? Um, and those are the types of things you learn in the program. So I would say that not only it, reputationally is it an amazing program, it has a lot of street cred because industry practitioners are part of the program, but also it has an element of curiosity attached with it and people are interested in having a longer conversation with you because you're coming out of this program. So that's been my, at least my impression of the perception. Well, uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Moby. Uh, so um, I think uh, all of our panelists uh, gave us uh, a, a glimpse uh, into um, how the program is perceived uh, by hiring ma uh, managers. And I think uh, that what we learn is that uh, our instructors uh, come from industry. So uh, th that uh, is very, very important. So the course, I mean, the program is uh, actually a, um, a program that teaches you practical skills. And I think Moby mentioned that, uh, that allows you to be able to hit the ground running when you graduate and you get a job uh, at a place and they, you're placed in any risk uh, silo, in any uh, risk uh, um, uh, area, you are going to be able to contribute uh, from the get-go uh, simply because you've had the opportunity to graduate from a very comprehensive uh, program. So thank you uh, uh, for, that, for, for, for that input, uh, uh, dear panelists. Um, okay, it looks like we are proceeding on schedule. Uh, we have uh, one question 
before we can uh, we open it up to um, uh, Q&A. Um, and and that, the question is, sitting from your from the perch you, you're, you're on uh, now, um, what advice would you give uh, current students uh, looking to break into a NRM or silo risk role, uh, but who lack prior experience? Uh, most of our students, of course, have internship uh, experiences, uh, but a great number of them uh, uh, don't have professional experience as such when when uh, they uh, come into uh, into the program. So, what sort of advice uh, would you give them um, uh, in terms of um, uh, an approach um, to getting a a, um, a job, let's say, in risk uh, without uh, prior experience? So let's start with uh, Moby and then move to Ankit and then to uh, Fabio. Uh, Moby. Um, so look, I think if I had to really think about it and what made m my process and my journey easy, I would say my advice would be to show up. And what I mean by that is show up in your classes, engage with your professors, raise your hand, ask the questions that you need to. If you're online, turn on your cameras, if you're in person, show up to class every day. If you're in the city, show up to New York City every day. Go to the career design lab. Do what you need to to show up every single day that you're in the program. The more you show up, the more doors will open up for you. The more you will become part of the process that leads you towards the goal of achieving um, the career that you want to. And if you show up, then you get engaged and the more engaged you are, the more the program will help you. Your professors will help you, your fellow students will help you, the alumni network will help you, but that won't happen unless you take the first step of really showing up and being engaged and being present. That's the best advice I can give to you because I'm someone who made a career switch from non-banking, from non-risk management into risk management. And the way I did that is by showing up every single day. Thank you, Moby. Uh, Ankit? Sure. Uh, so I would, you know, totally echo with what Moby said that uh, show up uh, because I think it's really important for uh, everyone. I've, I've, you know, during my course of uh, the entire journey that I had with the program, uh, I have also felt, you know, that sometimes uh, students think that, you know, uh, that they might ask a silly question or they are too shy to, you know, kind of uh, contribute uh, in a way that they wanted to. So I think, I think it's a great lesson that uh, please uh, talk, talk what you feel like, share your opinion about things and talk to the professors, talk to your uh, fellow students uh, if you want to you know, collaborate further because I think that's the whole purpose of becoming a you know, better risk professional is to be more communicative and uh, share ideas and constantly challenge the business in which uh, you know, they can uh, stop losing more money and make a better risk uh, management program as well. Um, I think apart from that, I would also say uh, challenge yourself uh, because uh, there are so many you know, amazing courses that the program offers. Uh, always you know, try to uh, take courses that you feel that there is something new to learn about uh, that specific field and see if you know, that really fits uh, your career aspirations as well. And at the same time, uh, look into different fields, uh, do some external research about it. For example, you know, when I was looking out for different opportunities, I was always looking for challenging roles so, you know, that uh, I could see have a great scope in the future and I can leverage all my risk management skills. I, uh, I'm, I currently work for fraud uh, and I had very limited knowledge about uh, fraud uh, risk uh, in particular, but uh, you know, I prepped for it. I learned uh, what are the fundamentals around it and you know, using uh, the fundamentals of risk management uh, that I learned through the program really helped me a lot. Uh, and I think that's the same thing I have, uh, you know, I, I did for most of the, you know, interviews that I gave that, you know, I leveraged all the information that I could collect uh, from, you know, the different uh, courses that I took, the advice that I uh, got from different professors that eventually, you know, helped me to land five job offers after I graduated. But it only helped because I, I, I was open to opportunities and, you know, I was open to take risks. So, you know, uh, be, uh, you know, aspire to be a good risk manager, but, you know, be ready to take more risk and, you know, 
uh, just uh, uh, be open to learning as well. Thank you, Ankit. Uh, Fabio. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Bob. Uh, I think I, you know, I, I don't have a lot to add uh, to my call, what my colleagues said here, but I guess, you know, one thing is, is the attitude. Uh, you know, I, I interview many, many colleagues, you know, through the years when we have a position or where, when we are helping someone to fulfill a position. Um, uh, and I, I think attitude is, is, is the thing, uh, you know, maybe you don't know everything you are supposed to do, uh, but, you know, if you have the attitude, if you, if you are uh, willing to help, that makes all the difference. Uh, you know, and over the course of my career, I saw that, uh, you know, it, it's funny, but uh, in my view, the most successful uh, professionals, they want had the attitude, they had knowledge, they were also collegial uh, to their colleagues, and uh, they had a curious mindset, which is which is always always helpful. So those are, are the things that would would really uh, make the difference. As far as classes are concerned, I think I would echo what Moby said. Uh, you know, you have to work hard. Uh, you have to. Uh, read everything uh, again. Have a have a curious mindset. Just go above and beyond. Uh, try to find other. Uh, ask your professors for for other biography. You know, leaving all readings and assignments to the week before the test. It's a it's a recipe for failure. <laughs> so uh, I think you know and and maybe the last point if i if i could stress a little bit what what ankit said uh, don't stay quiet you know even if you are an introvert i am kind of an introvert you just got to speak up you know ask uh give your contribution even if you think it's a silly question or a silly comment just just go and do it maybe it will trigger another subject or, you know, uh, an, another thought coming from the professor, you know, and you know what, everybody's learning uh, and everyone in class has a different perspective to offer to the others. So, yeah, I would say those are, are, are the things I would, I would prioritize. Well, thank you. Thank you, Fabio. I think uh, our panelists uh, gave us a, um, a first rate, um, advice. Um, and I hope uh, and I, uh, I believe our students uh, who uh, showed up or the students who are going to uh, be viewing this um, uh, in video uh, are going to benefit from the advice that you gave. Um, you know, it, it, uh, you mentioned about the, um, the activities that are going to uh, help students uh, come out of their shell, uh, apply their knowledge, make friends, make connections, be willing to help others so that they may help you. Um, yeah, the program, as Fabio said, has grown a great deal. Uh, it uh, has a growing, large and growing uh, alumni uh, presence. Um, and uh, and, and they are there for uh, our students to uh, connect uh, with. Uh, and when they graduate, they become part of the same network. And all of those people work in interesting uh, uh, venues. It may be self-employed, uh, maybe in startups, uh, across various uh, industries, uh, different size uh, companies, um, NGOs, um, agencies, uh, private companies, publicly traded companies, big, large, and, uh, and, and, and they have interesting ideas. They have the curious mindset because you cannot be in risk uh, without being uh, imaginative as to scenarios. Uh, your job is to try to envision what could go wrong 
what could go right uh, because we as entities as businesses right we face an uncertain uh, world uh, we don't know uh, uh, what the state of the economy is going to be um, uh, in the future uh, but we have to plan for any number of states and uh, and so we as risk managers have to be able to imagine uh, is scenarios that you can prepare for. So this is why it's often said that a failure is at the end uh, due to lack of imagination. Someone somewhere dropped the ball and failed to imagine something that was hiding in plain sight. So having a curious mind will make you always uh, 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 you know, be aware of what's uh, going on, and and uh, that's uh, that's always a good start. Um, I don't see any Q and A questions. Uh, it's not too late for uh, our audience to post uh, any questions. Uh, but as a um, um, uh, it, it, but in in lieu of that, is there any um, uh, lightning round? question that you would like to answer uh, by way of uh, if you only had one piece of advice out of the beautiful set of advices that you gave which one would you single out as being uh, probably the most important um, we can start whoever wants to start first um, maybe I can start so uh, I think uh, I would still emphasize uh, in three words, network, network, network. It's all about networking. It's all about networking with your peers, with your uh, professors, uh, industry leaders, and everyone who is interesting, interested in making you a successful risk manager. So uh, that definitely plays a huge part in your overall uh, journey uh, across you know, everything that you do uh, as, a part of the, uh, as a part of Columbia program. So I feel that uh, take it very seriously and you know, start building your network uh, as soon as possible if you haven't. And you will see things changing around you, if not early, but at the, same, at the right time. Yeah, thank I you, think... Ankit. Go ahead, Fabio. S sorry, thank you, Bob. I think uh, one of the things is, is enjoy the, the beautiful campus we have. You know, it's not it's not something like uh, like like Ankit said said before. He he was in basically all libraries. So I I got to enjoy most of them, not all of them, but you have infinite resources there. You know, you can you can access all types of information. You have access to 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 all books and uh, you know things like like Bloomberg and you know all, all this type of, of, of sources they are they are golden and even in large institutions sometimes you don't have access to that because the license is just so expensive uh, so you know you gotta enjoy it you know uh, I think you made a lot of effort to enter this program so it's uh, in my case was a was a the two-year program, but for me, it was like a sprint. You know, I I had to do uh, basically everything I could do in two years. You know, uh, network like Ankit said, uh, enjoy the campus, and uh, you know, uh, get to know the libraries, and you know, make friends, study, and go back and forth uh, to to work and and Colombia that that was also also a big big part of it and uh, yeah I think I think that networking and enjoying the resources sometimes you may feel overwhelmed because it's just there are just so many resources there uh, but you know sometimes for me for example I as a as a, as a working professional was hard to use all the resources but i i was able to focus and say hey you know in my case the the career design lab uh will will help me a lot 
So let, let me do that. Or let me call uh, a, a professor to get his or her advice uh, on, on a, a given subject. So th those are the things I, I, I enjoy the most at, at Columbia. Thank you, Fabio. Malvi? Look, um, I think I would say if you're if you're part of the program, you're already at an Ivy League and then you're in New York City, which is the world's best city to be in. So whether you're online or in person, my advice to you would be engage, engage with the program, engage every single day with everything that you're doing. Don't worry about anything else. Raise your hand, show up, participate. You're going to get so much more out of the program than you're putting in. And really, all you have to do is show up. Uh, so that, that's really my advice. Show up every single day that you're part of the program and embrace all of it. I wish I could get those two years back again, but unfortunately, I can't. And so I'm going to live vicariously through everyone else. And my advice to you would be to really engage. Engage with your professors, with your alumni, with your classmates, with the city, with the, with the university itself, libraries, CDL, whatever it is. Make the most of everything that Columbia offers you because it offers you so much. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Moby. Thank you, Fabio. Thank, thank you, Ankit. It's so nice to see you again. And uh, I think uh, with, oh, there is a question. Let me just uh, address it. Um, okay. The question is, there's a lot of focus on being a risk manager. Can you elaborate? how an education in ERM uh, is applicable to other professional paths? Um, well, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, I will, uh, I will um, uh, just like to say uh, from the point of view of the program that uh, um, it, it, uh, you know, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, alums, we have, students uh, who come from different parts of an organization outside of risk and they just want to learn more about risk so that they can become better financial managers uh, or be better oper operating officers so um, so the program uh, you know gives you a set of, of skills um, how you apply them uh, is uh, going to be your uh, job, your challenge, your interest. So um, we have um, graduates, for example, alums who uh, made careers in, as business analysts and as executives uh, of um, lines of businesses, uh, not just in risk. So, uh, but I'd like to, to uh, hear uh, our panelists as well uh so um anyone wants to go first uh, yeah bob i think uh if you if you think about an an organization uh, risk is everywhere um so if you're not in the second line of defense like we are as risk stewards you are a risk owner of a, of a given process so and if you are a risk owner you have to manage this this risks. Uh, I have I have colleagues that are that are traders uh, on the trading floor, and they they benefited a great deal from from learning risk management techniques. So I think you know it's not only uh, applicable. This program ERM is not only applicable to those who want to uh, raise up in the, in, the, in the risk management line of defense, but also, like you said, business heads, uh, traders, uh, finance managers. I've seen you know, a lot of people uh, coming and going from the risk management department to, uh, to other departments. Uh, to the business line, uh, to to uh, uh, to you know being a, a CFO or a COO of an of an organization of a bank, so that that would be my my two cents. Thank you, Fabio. Ankit, were you uh, did you want to add something? 
Yeah, sure. I think Fabio uh, gave very good advice and insights about, you know, the kind of uh, options people can take after uh, learning so many techniques from the program. Uh, I had many friends who had very different backgrounds uh, when I was uh, studying at Columbia. Uh, some people had uh, backgrounds in jewelry designing, for example, and had business back home uh, that they wanted to take over. Uh, and uh, their major reasoning was to understand how to make better decisions for the business and understand how they could not lose, uh, you know, more uh, money out of, you know, uh, if there is a, a lack of a demand for certain uh, um, geographies, for example. Um, another example I, I remember from last year was one of my colleagues was uh, working for a firm that was making COVID masks. And uh, she was, uh, you know, having a very strong opinion about uh, how would they, you know, uh, um, procure, uh, you know, better quality masks uh, from the suppliers and how could they, you know, cut the risk of uh, not uh, having inferior products and how do, how would they strategize, uh, you know, in terms of, um, you know, uh, delivering uh, large quantities of masks across the world. So it, it's a very, you know, very open uh, environment for anybody who uh, wants to learn uh, the techniques that you learn here and apply in real life skills. And I would say in general as well, uh, uh, risk management teaches you so many, you know, skills related to better decision making that, you know, any specific profession uh, profession and management would require uh, all the time. So uh, I think, uh, you know, it's applicable to all kinds of sectors where you are involved in some kind of strategic uh, decision making or you want to learn about uh, how to avoid uh, specific risks related to your business. Thank you, thank you, Ankit. That's indeed very, uh, very true. Uh, Moby. Yeah, I, I mean, I would just like to say that I think the program is uh, a very holistic program. It's a professional program. It's not just teaching you how to be a risk manager. As I said previously, it's teaching you how to communicate effectively. It's teaching you how to reach out to various stakeholders. I had friends who graduated from the program and became consultants, and I have a friend who became an investment banker. And I really think that it was the polish and professionalism that the program was able to give them and really work on how they can effectively communicate. They can think strategically. It's not just about thinking like a risk manager, right? Strategic thinking is so important. And because of the plethora of offerings that the program has, you don't just think about risk, although you realize risk exists in everything, you think about how to be a very effective professional. And so I think the program has a lot to offer and uh, you know the paths are all open for you. It's really about where you want to end up. Thank you. This is indeed uh, uh, a very, very good set of answers to that very, very important question. And uh, we thank uh, the person uh, who uh, raised it. Um, and uh, there are no other questions and we are approaching the uh, end of the program. And I think we've taxed you uh, uh, sufficiently for one uh, uh, event. We thank you so much for giving back to the program. And this is exactly what you are doing. And we appreciate that very much. You are helping a new generation of students to uh, walk the walk that you walked and to walk uh, uh, the path that you're walking now. So we thank you very much and we wish everyone uh, a good semester, a great semester, and we thank you for being here uh, today. Uh, so till we meet again, so long for now. Take care. <laughs>